I just want to start off this video by stating I don't promote or condone the use of substances on this channel, legal or illegal. I'm simply making this as it's an experience from my past and I feel now is the time to share it and if someone out there is wanting to go on a psychedelic journey that they learn from the mistakes that I made and if they are going to do it they do it safely once again not promoting it hi guys it's your boy MLG Skillar 420 coming at you with another video and I know I haven't posted in a while but I wanted to kind of come back and give you guys a story from when I was in high school. I think this would be my junior year of high school and I need to first off start by saying this was a time in my life where I was first introduced to psychedelics and at this in particular point I had tried many different substances. I've tried a lot of research chemicals that people were telling me were LSD. I now know that it's not the case. Uh, I tried shrooms, I tried MDMA, I tried a lot of different things, so I was pretty experienced with uh, what those states of mind could be and how powerful they could be. However, I wasn't using the psychedelics at this point in my life for self-betterment or to have spiritual experiences as I would much later on in my life, um, so this really took me off guard. So, I was hanging out with my friend, we're just going to call him Bob for the sake of privacy, and me and Bob were going to later on hang out with a bunch of our mutual friends who were fairly experienced psychonauts in their own right, and I tried to convince them all to have this experience with me. Um, so they agreed, and eventually Bob agreed as well, and we went, and we found someone who could supply it. Now, here's where it gets a little bit dark. For people who are experienced psychonauts, they understand that there are a lot of chemicals out there that claim to be LSD and are not really LSD, and some of these are actually very dangerous. One of these chemicals is called 25-Iome. I might be... 25-I-Iome, yeah. I might be butchering that name, but... Uh, and this is what we got and we knew what it was but I really didn't care I didn't do any research on to what it was at this point I just I wasn't experienced I was naive so we got home actually no we so we took the tabs there and then we started driving home and I remember the come up was took a long time for me Everyone else was already in it by the time I was coming up. But when it came up, it was like I was on a fucking rocket ship, man. And I just blasted off. And all of a sudden, these visuals just got very intense. I remember I was looking at the floor and I started to realize it's not just a floor. That's a continuation of floor and wall and ceiling. And it's all one in just one unit. And it... Uh, and... The walls are moving closer and further and closer and further and at this point in my brain I was really loving it. So I was just sitting there, we were outside on his deck at this point, I was just sitting there enjoying the effects and I remember it just kept getting more and more and more intense until finally I was seeing things that weren't there. So, I started seeing these fairies, and these fairies were, they were, they were trying to tell me, not in English, but they were trying to communicate to me that my friends did not have my best intentions in mind. Keep in mind, we're all sitting on this deck, right? And I'm the only one that is, like, this far gone at this point. And I'm trying not to pay attention, because I know that at this point... I'm gone completely and I tried to ignore them but when we went inside and we started watching we were watching Pink Floyd videos I remember and usually Pink Floyd does a great job of just sort of letting me go with the flow and just helping out the trip and it just it usually it just goes really well with the whole psychedelic vibe however 
I couldn't shake what the fairies were trying to tell me. And as a result, naturally, my brain started to piece together all these awful things that could be true about my situation and about my friends. Uh, and I just kept having this loop, and this would be a theme throughout the whole experience until the come down. Uh, now, the next thought that I put in my brain was especially bizarre. Um, and it's what really, I believe, was the marking point for this is going to be a pleasant experience into, oh, this is hell. So, I was looking at this bottle, and I was having this voice in my head. And this voice was telling me, if you don't drink that whole bottle of water right now, you're going to die. So, me listening to the benevolent voice in my head, I chugged the whole bottle of water in one chug. Very random, like, it was, like no one was really doing it. Everyone was enjoying themselves watching the Pink Floyd videos. And I just got up, grabbed this bottle of water, and just chugged it. And my friends were very alarmed, because... <laughs> They're all in a similar state, or maybe not similar, but they're all in a pretty intense state of mind, and here's this fucking kid just getting up and spazzing, basically. So, I made eye contact with them. And at this point, the visuals were ineffable. There's no describing them. But one of the things I was seeing was my friends morphed into something else and I don't know if anyone else has had the, a similar experience but they ceased to be the same people they were and they just kept morphing and morphing and morphing until finally they became this a demonic being with horns and a tail and I remember very vividly that uh, when we were watching TV later that it wasn't just them it was all people who had these horns and a tail and they just looked like demons and it wasn't just like two horns it was two spiraling horns and a horn in the middle it was very disturbing and I tried not to make this very clear because I didn't want to alarm everyone else yet well I would eventually alarm everyone else, but I didn't want to do it yet. It still was yet to get more intense. So I sat down, I tried to breathe, I tried to think happy thoughts, and I tried to break myself out of this loop that my friends didn't have the best intentions for me, as I felt the visuals were a direct representation of the loop I was experiencing, and I still believe that to my very core. Um, and so at this point I'm very I'm very disassociated from the rest of them at this point like they're all having conversations and laughing and just enjoying themselves and I'm just sitting there wide-eyed in astonishment of what I'm experiencing and I remember looking over at the TV and at this point they had put on that 70s show <sighs> the patterns on the wall of the foreman's house in that show could only be described as just animals everywhere like like the the world they were in was sentient it was alive it was creatures and at this point I freaked out and I got up and I said I gotta go for a walk, just real abruptly, and my friends were all like, what? And I just, I walked up Bob's stairs and out the door. Keep in mind, this is really late at night. Bob's uh, neighborhood was patrolled by police constantly because it wasn't the best neighborhood, and it just was not a good idea. But I did it anyway. Now, my friends tell me I was out there for only five minutes. But it felt like hours. And I remember what happened is I walked out the door. I was about to go on a walk. And I just stopped. And I looked up. And the sky. Like. I was in a state where I was seeing things that weren't there. So I was seeing planets. And I was convinced that they were the planets. 
in our solar system and I was just seeing them everywhere and it was insanely profound so I kind of just laid down and just stared at him and keep in mind I wasn't enjoying myself at this point like I said there had been a, pr a, a ton of negativity right before I walked outside and I was not in a good headspace even though I was so dumbfounded by what I was seeing now my friends being very concerned for me just abruptly walking out walked out they said about five like they they, they walked out about five minutes later uh, like I said, it felt like a lifetime. I was just out there. And I heard the door open, and immediately, I was in a very negative headspace, so I assumed it was my friend Bob's father, because he lived with his father. Uh, they didn't, they don't really talk a lot, but his father is there upstairs all the time in his room. So I thought it was his dad. So, panic started to set in, and then I heard their voices and I started to calm down a little bit um but they were they were they assumed that they were gonna have to walk down the street and look for me so they were like preparing each other for that and then they walked around the corner and they saw me laying there and they just kind of stopped and stared at me and I stared at them and they asked are you okay and at this point in the experience I just decided to be honest with them so I, I just explained to them what I was feeling and the thought loop that I was having and my belief that I was never going to come down because that was another thing I was experiencing is I thought I was going to be stuck in this state forever and they just kept trying to calm me down and reassure me but in the end it really is only words when you're in a space like that it's very hard to pull yourself out so they brought me back inside and I remember when I walked in one of the most distinct visuals I've ever seen to this day was my friend Bob has a propeller on his wall from an airplane this propeller was spinning like it was about to fucking take off right and obviously it wasn't really but that's how gone I was and I remember looking at Bob and I was just like do you fucking see that and he was just he nodded. I don't know if he really did or not. I don't feel like he was really on the same level as me at that point. Um, and he was like, yeah, man, I see it. And then he kind of ushered me downstairs back to his, we, we called it the man cave, back to his man cave. And he laid me down and just kind of stayed in there with me, which, I mean, bless his heart that he did that, but it really didn't help because like I said, I was perceiving everyone to just be these demonic entities and I mean it really was very unsettling because for the entire peak while well, I was the rest of it I pretty much spent just in his room trying to calm down while everyone else was outside uh, watching TV because it couldn't really do anything for me you just kind of have to let the person figure it out at that point so gradually I started coming down in his room and when I felt grounded enough to go outside and be with the rest of them, we, we kind of talked, and I kind of talked about the experience I had, and they were really, they were shocked. Like, I th I think some one of them in particular was bothered that I didn't really trust him. But like, like I said, it was, it, it was out of my control at that point. You can't control your mind state when you ingest a substance like this and I think he understands that now but in retrospect I can't really blame him um and the come down was actually pretty nice in comparison to the rest of it you kinda just get the gradual sense of coming back and this is me and this is my friends and they love me and that part of it was really beautiful uh, and I remember I wasn't fully like I would say coherent until about two o'clock uh, keep in mind we had taken it at very late at night and I remember my mom picked me up and the rest of my friends to drop them off at their house and it just was such a surreal car ride it was like 
I was cruising for infinity through a, a vast desert, which really wasn't the case. It, I was in the city. Like, fuck. I don't even know how I got that out of it, but... Yeah, it was just a really insane experience, and I think that my underlying message from this is that you really, really have to treat these psychedelic compounds with the respect they deserve, as they are... Uh, it's incomprehensible how powerful they can be on the human mind. They demand your respect, and they deserve it. And I was an arrogant kid. And I thought because I had experienced these psychedelic states before that I was just invincible. And my ego just drove me to just craving the visuals. And it really took that ego disillusioned experience for me to really respect what they can do. You know what I mean? And I think that if anyone's watching this and they're thinking about embarking on their own psychedelic experience, I can't say that I necessarily encourage it. I don't promote that stuff on this channel, but if you are going to do it, you need to understand that you are about to break your brain's perception of reality and replace it with something else. And it is going to happen. You can't take a substance and... Ex expect the rea reality as you know it. It's it won't happen like that. You are going to experience something else, and that is why they demand your respect because they can show you heaven, they can show you bliss, or they can show you hell on earth. And I know a lot of that is up to the person and the mind state that you have when you're going into it, but you need to respect. The, the compounds that you take. And you need to do research on them. Don't do what I did. It was a mistake. And I regret it immensely. Even now. So just be careful. And God bless. Love you all.